Wow. So much better this time. What is this, Matt? I don't know for a while. <laughs> He's so, I don't so like bad. I'm, so I don't look like I'm 15. <laughs> Yeah, instead you look like you're in Pearl Jam. <laughs> man, man, she's so happy. Nice. Uh, Keep her around. Everyone. We are way more on it this time around. Uh, last time we had this. Where are you, Matt? I'm in my new bike room. Oh, in the new place? Yeah, it's still under construction, though. Nice. So, nice. Yeah. Cool. Um, all right. Well, welcome, everyone. We are kind of on time this time. Uh, this is Tough Talk, episode number four. We did a talk last week. Jonas was there. We talked a little bit about Mid-South. This time around, we, we kind of guessed that uh, Jonas was going to win Stratarosa, so that's why we planned in advance for him to show up. So, nice job, Jonas, following the plan. Um, but, yeah, we had... Yeah, Jonas, I think, is below me, if that's how everybody's seen it. This is Matt Freeman. This is Dave. So, we are going to talk a little bit about Stratarosa, and I'll kick it off with Matt. How many years has Stratarosa been going on, and how what is your involvement been with it? Um, so this is the ninth year, Whoa. and we had to skip a year due to COVID, um, but this is the ninth, or so the ninth Strata Rosa. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, so it, it started, um, I think the first year, the first two years were maybe just 65 miles, and um, I'm going to, you know, I, I can't say all the names because I can't remember every, but Mark Fries, uh local guy was really kind of like the the brainchild behind it. Um, and then my involvement, I guess, over the years has just been kind of like helping out with course marking and giving my kind of input on course layout and that kind of stuff. Uh, this year, all I did was mark like a portion of the course. Um, so we have like, like a whole local crew um, that, you know, really did all the work, basically. So, um, Different, part, different parts of the course were marked by different people. So it's, you know, it's full volunteer effort. The, the entire thing is a um, charity for like our local conservancy and it helps me, you know, maintain the trails and, and that type of stuff. So yeah, complete 100% um, volunteer for charity deal. And the group that the money goes to, is that all um, like tra trail advocacy work kind of? Um, I believe there's some trail advocacy work, but a lot of it just goes to, so like we had a SAG stop this time at um, just outside of Oakmont Park. And it was, I can't remember what the exact mileage was at that point. Um, but but that, that is like, it's called Gateway Ranch and let me see if I can figure out where the mileage was. That sack stuff. Jonas, while it he's was, getting out his physical maps, is he telling the truth so far? What? Is he telling the truth so far while he pulls out his his like physical maps? About the core? What do you mean? <laughs> Did he mark everything correctly? How many people got oh, lost out was, there? Oh, that was good. Oh, okay. I I complete the fifth on the the rest of the course but so <laughs> yeah so at, at about mile 65 is there was a sag stop at at gateway ranch and there's a there's actually a home there that was donated on live oak canyon to the conservancy and there's a caretaker that lives there and he maintains the trails in the area oh, wow. and, uh, yeah so it's a pretty Sweet. big effort and i you know again i don't know all the details and you know how much money is raised and and all that um that's something that like uh, Adrian um, and some of those other folks could really kind of speak to. But mm -hmm. it's always been from day one a fundraiser for you know our, our local trails. And you know if you come out from out of the area and ride, then you see like wow, there's tons you know to ride out there. 
overabundance of trails. And we only scratched like the surface because a lot of the stuff, the conservancy isn't really real big on us taking, you know, 300 people through some of those trails because it requires, you know, even more work. more work. So we had to skip a lot of the good, or really a lot of the good stuff too, actually. Yeah, especially this year, the amount of ruts out there, I'm sure. Yeah. yeah, and with all the rain we've had too, you know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff up on Crafton and some stuff at Oakmont Park that we weren't, that we weren't able to use. Yeah. Uh, I think I've only ridden it once with you guys and we got the rain that year and it was like super cold when we got out to the far side of that course, but yeah, that was my fear this year is we're going to get rain again, but John, how many times have you ridden it? Only 100% win rate. Uh, uh, yeah, it's it's always been the third week of uh, of March, and it's crazy the difference in weather we've had. You know, like the third year, the third year it was 100 miles, and it was really, really freaking hot. Um, and only about 14 people finished, I believe, the 100 miler. Wow. Uh, actually, I know for a fact, like, only 14 people finished. Wow. And then, you know, so the year that Dave did it, I can't remember what year that was. That year was, like, you know, muddy mess for much of it. Um, so, yeah, it's it's varied as far as, you know, weather and terrain and what, you know, we've gotten over the years. Nice. Yeah. I think I've ridden it um, – I didn't ride it last year because a year ago last year was when I was getting the pacemaker, but I've ridden it every other year since. And only okay. I destroyed a tire the mud year just before we rode up the dam, so I didn't finish that year, but I've finished every other year. So. Yeah, that was the year that I was there is the tire blowout year. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. I like to show up and help. <laughs> I didn't finish that year because the rain sucked so bad. Yeah. It was cold out there. That was that was for sure. All right. Let's get into some strategy, Dave. Yeah. What was the plan with how you guys knew the conditions would be or how was the pacing going to be for you guys on course? Did you talk to Jonas about anything or did you guys have two totally different things now that you're old and wise? His pacing or my pacing, complete different plan right <laughs> uh i mean we we talked you know we really wanted as far as jonas's like plan and strategy goes like we really wanted to get like, like a, a good training day out of it because you know he's got some big goals this year and we've had some shorter events um happen leading up to this and you know mid south was you know ended up being shorter and we didn't you know we didn't get everything out of mid south that we had hoped. Yeah. So this was really in place to be, be you know, like a really good, good training day. And as far as strategy goes, like we didn't we didn't talk too much strategy. It was basically, you know, be at the front so hard. Stay stay in the pedals, you know, stay on power like through the entire thing basically. And then and you know, dial in nutrition stuff for some of the longer events that we've got coming up this year. Uh, if you were, because like the thing people don't realize we didn't really say is that Matt has been coaching Jonas for a while and <clears throat> has worked as a, a coach for a while and myself too. And so if we were kind of like, we take a lot of these events and work with people and kind of give them some tips on pacing things, but this is one of those unique courses where you go into some pretty steep stuff, or I don't know. I, I don't. I know when I went there, I paced it completely wrong. So, what are the strategies or suggestions that you would say for people? Uh, well, I mean, if you look at you know the course profile, and you look at you know even at the halfway point, there was still. Um, over 3,000 feet of climb. So, you know, mile 42, right? over 3,000 feet of climbing to be done. Yeah. Um, so you could really do a lot of damage in the first half, and a lot of people did. I, I started 
trying to stay with Jonas in the group that he was in, I started harder than I should have. And, uh, <laughs> I know, um, had, a pretty, had some dark spots pretty early on, but, you know, then dialed it back just knowing like, okay, I'm going to have, you know, once we get in, into like Polar Crooks area, which was the last 15 miles, roughly, there's a lot of climbing in Holder Crooks and it's, it's not super steep, but it's steep enough that it hurts, especially after you've been out for five hours. Or so. yeah. yeah. That was similar to like what we saw at the Arizona for BWR is like, there's so much climbing in the beginning and people are all excited and it's spicy. And you're like, yeah, six mile climb on the road or two of them, but back to back and everybody's going hard. It makes the rest of that stuff hurt later when they're not as hard of climbs, you know? You yeah. spend too many matches and then you're like kind of crawling. Yeah. So John, did you kind of want to make a separation at some point before that halfway or did you, were you just like, I'm going to put my head down and do my own thing. And if it happens, it happens. Well, I kind of rode like, so I was just going to, my plan was from the start to just go hard from like the very start, but then they, they had like a, a neutral rollout. So then I had to, so then I just ended up riding with everyone for like, uh, I don't know, like two hours maybe, but there was only like four of us. So I guess it kind of split like right in Highland. So like right after the neutral rollout kind of, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just was kind of waiting. Matt had told me about like one, there's this one spot that was super steep and I knew like if I just went really hard into it and then like went really hard up it and then just kept going really hard that no one would be able to <laughs> stay with. So that was kind of my plan. Oh, good. Okay. So there was a plan. There was yeah. a spot that you kind of were eyeing. Yeah. I liked it. Had you ridden it before? Like, did you know what to expect in that? Yeah. Time? No, okay. I also waited until like the two and a half hour mark. Cause I knew like, or at least like when I got to like the other side of the course, just cause I like knew it better. So I didn't want to have to like, I mean, I can like the, most of the single tracks I've ridden like hundreds of times. So right, right. It's You're kind like, of I like <laughs> yeah. home turf advantage, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Nice. yeah. And that, the, the section he's talking about, it's paved. It's like a, a utility road. It's miserable. Track. Yeah. It's like, there's, it's 20% like for a lot of it. Oh, I mean, wow. It's not very long. It's, it's like um, 10 minutes. To, I think I'm trying to find it in the file here actually. Um, but it is, it's one of those, you know, we ride by it all the time and we never ride it. Just like, forget that. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, anybody that wrote it, I'm sure knows what we're talking about. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah that's funny. Nice. Yeah. Well, that's good. So at that point, did you like look back and you're like, okay, now I can kind of do my own thing for the rest of this? Well, so I. I was kind of, like, watching my power and, like, what everyone was getting dropped at. So I just rode, like, right under what everyone was going to get dropped at, like, going into it so that it was hard. And then I kind of just rode, like, as hard as I could up it. But I had to stop at the top because my, like, axle was loose. So I stopped at the top and, like, screwed the axle back in and then kept going. <laughs> Why do you have issues like this? I don't get well, it. I don't, I don't even know how that happens. Yeah, well, Seriously. It's called a pre-game check. You know, you just kind of go through the bolts. Yeah, it's a thing. Check them. Talk to your mechanic. I know. <laughs> yeah, where's Woody? Where's Woody when you need him? <laughs> so, for but, yeah, and that wasn't your plan for the day to just go really hard the whole time? Yeah, well, you're <laughs> My, my plan yeah yeah uh, I, I mean i didn't really have my plan was just to like ride steady and hard like the whole time and not you know I, I haven't been riding a whole lot you know like so basically just you know never go into the red although i did yeah <laughs> um, but not for very long and then i just pretty much rode steady and yeah. the, the cool thing was i i rode you know I ended up riding with like, like a lot of people that we know, like rode with Justin Dillon for a long time, rode with Mike Negretti. Oh, nice. Um, rode a lot with like, like the 65 milers intersected with the 85 milers a lot. Um, so, you know, it was interesting to see though, like who 
looks like they went at, they may have went out too hard for too long early on um, and weren't able to sustain, you know it was you know by the time we got over the Holder Crooks area which was um, let me see what mileage was there that was you know roughly the last 15 ish miles mm -hmm. people were hurting pretty bad so they yeah, five miles deep too on the way back it was so yeah. so bad yeah yeah <laughs> and you know Jonas is, is right I mean like obviously local knowledge like played you know you can look at a course profile and it you know looks like one thing but you get out there and you know like we know like how long some of those those climbs are at Holder Crooks and you know and that's the end that is like you know up to that point so like for Jonas for example before he even got the Holder Crooks he had done I didn't run the, 30, the camel back of this one. <laughs> he had done 3,600 KJs before we even got, you know, before he got to Holy Cross. Oh, yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, Very I mean, good. I think one of the things I wanted to point out was the differences in goals. Like, obviously, Jonas kind of wanted to win. You, Matt, wanted to, like, push yourself and have a good time. And I think you did that. Even though you went in the red a little bit, you still know how to to pace it after that to still have a good day. But that was, you know, one of the things I want to talk about because not everybody can go into a race saying, like, I want to win this thing. Most people Wait, have more Wait, Sammy Butter goals. wants to know if Jonas cleaned his camel back yet. I just yeah. got a camel back cleaning <laughs> kit today. <laughs> I guess that awesome. takes us into the I, aid station. I haven't enough. cleaned it yet, though. <laughs> Oh, yeah, so Jonas, what were your aid station plans on that camelback now? I didn't I didn't wear a camelback. Okay. Then, no. I didn't want to. I don't like doing it in like the more climbing races, but uh I don't know. Yeah, I just I stopped at like every aid station I think. Oh wow. So all right now, maybe maybe not everyone. I stopped ah eh, actually no, I think I did stop at everyone. Yeah, I just like grabbed cokes at everyone basically and just tried to make it back what about bottles i did not drink as much as i should have probably but uh, what? i mean i drank like i drank like so i drank a big bo i mean with cokes i probably drank like four bottles okay i think that That's was not enough <laughs> but like all right yeah so maybe it was more than that so you're how many, you're right how many hours was it a few. Your ride time, your ride time was about six oh four. Oh man! So man. Six, oh, sorry, for six hours and four. But it wasn't that hot, so like. Fair, you know, fair. But, but like you still should have drank. You still should have drank like six six bottles. Yeah, at the least. Plus the cokes at the minimum. <laughs> yeah. All right. It works. For improvement. Average uh, camp was fifty seven. Yeah, it wasn't like it was like. I wasn't sweating at all very much. Oh. Right, but that like? remember we were talking about, you know, getting your nutrition plan dialed in for some of this other long mm -hmm. stuff, right? Like, yeah. If you don't practice it now, like, we always talk about this, and I'd say, like, yeah, it probably needs to hear it from other people, too, because, like, if you don't practice it at these fun events that you know they are in your backyard when you go to other things through the year, and we'll talk about this a bunch when we do our camps, is, like, start to make a plan and work that plan into the other events and then you just keep adding the hours like when you go to kansas and it's june and it's 90 degrees and 95 yeah. percent humidity you have to get it right yeah especially coming from california because mm -hmm. but that's kind of the thing you know yeah no that makes sense <laughs> um matt what was your plan my plan yeah for like uh, bottles. bottles and stuff well so i did like kind of the same plan I always do. Like you know, one bottle I have on my bike is water. Another another bottle is mix of some sort. Um, and then I had um, uh, uh, what do you call it? bolts, and then endurance tap maple syrup. You know, those are 100 calories per shot. And then um, rice krispie treats. 
Did you stop to refill at the aid station? Yeah, I stopped at um, three. Yeah. Three. Uh, so you carried, carried more, so you could just kind of ride through knowing the route. Say that again, Dave? You just kind of rode with more stuff knowing the route, so you could get through to the yeah, stop. Yeah, I, I, I never grabbed any. I mean, I packed all the food I needed, you know. Oh, okay. All of my jersey pocket. My only plan was to stop for fluid. Yeah. Did do you did you drink about six bottles then by the end of yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. I was in I was empty. It took me six six hours and forty minutes, forty some minutes. Um and yeah, I was completely empty. And I did I did six, six bottles. So I you know, I could have used another half another bottle roughly. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, the temperature is probably fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, something else that we should note is it took, it took longer than, let's see. So I was, uh, uh, 638. Um, so it took, it took longer for everybody. Than, it took longer for Jonas to finish. I thought then, you know, it was, it wasn't muddy anywhere really, but it was just slow because the ground was soft. Yeah. Yeah. So like if you look at, you know, I was thinking, you know, we did Rock Cobbler earlier this year and the mileage is pretty close. The elevation is pretty close. The breakdown between pavement and dirt is pretty close. But, uh, you know, my average speed at Rock Cobbler was, was faster. Uh, um, I think that it was also just because there was so much single track. And the single track was like, like slow single track. Yeah, I thought thought about that too but there was this year at rock cobbler there was a lot of single track and a lot of muddy stuff really? and, yeah and you know a lot of walking or not yeah. a lot some walking but it was just the overall you know it's it's a little sandier out in our area rather than the area mm-hmm. so it's just lower in general you know so it, it did take it took longer than kind of anticipated longer than years previous years the course is different every year but um, for it to take, you know, six hours ish, eighty five miles. I, I, I'm anxious to kind of go back and look and see. Like Brent Prinslow has ridden it many, you know, a lot of years, and look at like what his time was. Yeah. Um, the other years and stuff like that. So, so you made a better, better tire choice this time than the year that you double flatted those Ramblers. <laughs> uh, I, I ran. Didn't think of that. I ran 650B. Oh, the 40, big boys. Kenda Flint Ridges, 45. Yeah, um, yeah those are fun. They're good. The, year, the Rambler year was just, that was just pure. Well, the, the, the problem was the rim. It wasn't the tire. <laughs> Whatever. It was. It was It was an aluminum rim that I dented so bad. Like, Blew out. Stay on it. So. <laughs> yeah. You, like, destroyed it. Yeah. Jonas, what was your, your tire choice? I ran uh, Bond Trigger GR1's 40s. So it's like smaller tread, kind of. Yeah. I, I always but, run those around here, so. What tire pressure were you running, Jonas? I don't Probably know. 80. Oh, no. Come on. <laughs> here we go. No. Yeah. It was, it was, uh, it's, I usually run, okay, when I go to, like, the big races, I run 28, 29. Okay. But, like, this, I just, like, pump the tires up to, like, like, like I, I don't pump my tires up every single day. So, I just, like, I leave it at 28, 29, and then whatever, like, I'll pump it up, like, once a week to 28, 29, and then just, like, leave once it for a week? the week. Are you a triathlete? What is this? You're supposed to check them for every ride. Yeah. Every ride? Yes. That's a lot of work. Oh my god. Oh. God, you're fired. At, at least for events, you yeah. know. Yeah, well, I, I, know. I, was, I was more thinking of it as like a training day. So like, that was, it wasn't, like, I was trying to like get oh, my new training, but well. like. Well, shammy butter. Is I ran, I, I ran twenty five psi oh. fifty b. Okay, and I was, I was nice. pretty happy with with uh, my choice. Yeah, that's a good, good low squishy squishiness. Well, 
Let's assume you were around 30, Jonas. I just know it was it was at least 28, or it might have been a little lower, because it, like, if air had <laughs> been let out by then. Didn't check it. <laughs> well, that's good. Okay, so we know. So we know for the next time, or the next event, we, whatever the case may be. Again, we need to talk to the mechanic and see what's I going think he, on over there. He, he watched it, so he uh, We don't need like... to talk to the mechanic. He, he needs to... Well, the, true, also, too. at the very <laughs> least, you should care the about day we pre The day before, I was up late because uh, <laughs> when we pre-rode, I pre-rode with Andrew, and he, like, blew his wheel up. So, like, we were – he was at my house uh, swapping wheels and tires, like, the night before. And then I had gone over the bars into the mud on the pre-ride, so I was washing my bike. So I just didn't have like a whole ton of time to like make sure like the tire pressure was perfect and everything. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I was busy like bike wasn't <laughs> didn't have it, I had like shift like mud jammed into the shifters is bad. Fair. Fair enough. From now on in all these talks you're gonna need to know your PSI. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So gearing also, collection. just ride them at that pressure all the time, like every ride anyway, so when they heat up or cool down, you know how they yeah. ride, and then you yeah. can tell the difference what's happening in a long yeah. race. Uh -huh. But I'm sure your coach says that stuff all the time, and then you're like, who are you? Well, I always run 28, 29. But it's, yeah, okay. Yeah. So yeah. 28, 29 <laughs> is the perfect should I just answer this? Uh, okay. Right. Maybe you should tell everybody how much you weigh, too. So. Okay, yeah. So I only weigh 135 pounds, or like 138 usually. So, so I run uh, 28 or 29 in my front <laughs> tire. What? And I weigh more than you, and I run about the same in my front tire. So I could probably get away with a little bit more, but. Well, the problem yeah, is, tires are less, different. I'll end up flatting yeah. as I ride to, like, so I have to put, like, a little bit more into, like, be safe. <laughs> okay. Uh, Jonas is a Shimano athlete, so real quick, give us your gearing selection choices on this bike. Cassette so, uh, and front chain ring. I think, I think it's a, a – well, I oh, no. know it's a two-by, but I don't know the, the gearing – I think it's a like, I don't know the exact year. So I think this is why I sent you the question <laughs> today, Thomas. It's a, it's, so I know that the, the like front chain ring for GRX DI2 only has one, one like setup, right? If you get the regular, like the Shimano rings. All right. Uh, no, it's okay. I think Jonas has a 48, 31 in the front. What's your cassette? Eleven or eleven thirty four. Okay. There you go. Okay. Yeah. There you go. And did you feel like did you, you had enough? Team? Did I what? Oh, Matt is out. I lost. Uh, my, I, lost my I audio. thought that it was. Uh, I thought it was fine. I think I would have been like, I would have rather ran a one by on this course. I think. Just because it's like so annoying to shift the two by in the single tracks all the time. Yeah. But I mean, yeah, I don't know. I thought it was fine. Yeah. It was nice on the road, and it was yeah. nice climbing. Yeah, you felt just the single like you had tracks are the annoying part because you have to. Yeah, I mean, I I think if I was just like riding it, I would have maybe wanted a bigger gear, but. I don't know. I like riding, like, I felt fine riding, like, all the steep stuff in Holda. Okay. Cool. Yeah, good. So, two by, good enough for Strata Rosa. Yeah. Um, Matt, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay, um, good. Um, what was your gearing choices? Uh, I ran a one by 40, um, 46, and yeah, I was pretty happy. I mean, I was really tired by the time we got the whole trip, so, you know, turning over, I would have liked to have, have like, a, a better climbing gear at that yeah. point. Yeah, But it, it was good everywhere else. And he's right. I mean, I think for a course like this, like a one by, you know, it's very mountain bikey. That's another thing. It's like, you know, for, for, for I had an athlete I coached from Minnesota that came out, 
And she, she, she's got a place out here, but she came out and wrote it. And it's, you know, it's completely different, the, the gravel writing that we have here on the West Coast versus yeah. the, that the rest of the country is calls gravel. So, you know, it's pretty mountain bikey, and the one by is... I like yeah, it. it's way better. Yeah. Um, I think, you know, having something, you know, something bigger than a 46 would have been nice for most people. Yeah. But, I think it cor correlates go, to the lack of fitness. You're like, I need more gears. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't go anything smaller up front than a 40, though. There was enough road, especially early on. Jonas, remember the, the section um, where we, we were the furthest west? In the oh, like, like on that, you know? on that like, uh, where the classic is on that. Camp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. was really fast. Yeah, fast I ran right there. out of gears there. Um, trying to keep up with you guys mm -hmm. so but anyway yeah i mean i was you know I, I i don't know what the breakdown was like how many people did the 85 and how many did the 65 but i do know that a lot of people that had you know planned to do the 85 just when, turned up at the other when the split came <laughs> to skip the last 10 to 15 miles like they skipped yeah <laughs> yeah it was bad yeah yeah. That sounds like my experience on that course, and I was like, I need to go back, but I was afraid of the rain again. Well, it was speaking perfect. Of the, speaking uh, of the routing, uh, <clears throat> Jonas, did you ride with the route on your uh -huh. crew too? Mm -hmm. I almost did it because my hammerhead was like, uh, so it was having problems charging. So I started the race with like forty percent, and I was worried that it was gonna die, but what? it made it. It made wow. it with the route on it, so it was fine. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would have had me. Yeah, I would have been scared. I run mine like the lowest, point. brightest, lowest, <laughs> like possible, so it like okay. doesn't die. Yeah. What about you, Matt? Yeah, for sure. I mean, with an event like this, where you know, I, I was riding with Mike Heilman from Vegas for a lot of this too. And we were talking like, you know, both of us can't think of an event that is, you know, like Rock Cobbler and Strata Rose are as close to one another as possible, like terrain wise, the whole deal. The difference is though, is that, you know, Sam that, that does Rock Cobbler, I mean, he's got it dialed as far as, you know, course marking. And I don't know how many people mark course for that event, but um, like, you know, ours is completely volunteer and we have different people marking different parts of the course. So the markings like really kind of inconsistent. Um, and that's, you know, that's what happens when you have a volunteer organization, right? Um, so, so having, and that's why I made that post the day before about, you know, making sure you upload your, your route. Mm -hmm. Cause there's a lot of sections out where there's trails like everywhere and yeah. your, your head unit can't keep up with with navigation when there's like trails everywhere and i missed know, the like, first corner even though i had the route uh yeah. i've just been like before it happens <laughs> you know you know and like some of the you know the faster you're going yeah it's the more important tell. it is to have like good marking right yeah you know it's not like we're on the grid system out here something like in kansas you know where you know everything's like right angle, left, right hand turn. So there's trails all over the place. I so, love, yeah. I love the idea that next year they're not marking the course and they're only giving out GPX files. <laughs> Team Mammoth. <laughs> yeah, did you, wait, you heard that idea? I know, I think, I think it's, it, I don't know if that's Adrian. Yeah, yeah. I, I think Adrian I, just sent that in. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know I, how I feel about that I mean, idea. it's, Oh, they were just cut out. Like with Mammoth, I know that even on that long course, you could you have uh, like enough turns to count on two hands, right? Yeah. That I cut out. No, yeah, we can count. I mean, that, you know, I mean, there's obvious sections where that don't need a lot of marking, right? Yeah. But there's other sections, you know, like where, you know, we know the area. We're, we're locals. We know like where where, you know, where we're going to end up and all that kind of stuff. But, um, 
you know, like Mike Negretti, for example, like missed the turn. You know, I mean, there's some pretty experienced writers that missed some corners and stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just better to have backup with navigation. Yeah. So last yeah. year on one last year's route, there was like this big climb in the middle. Yeah. And I was so is, frustrated uh, with my device because it didn't show up on the climber feature. And I think, I don't know if it was just, we were on some weird road and it didn't identify it, but how was the climber feature with the with this year's route, Jonas? Did all of them pop up pretty much? Uh, yeah, I think for the most part. I don't usually, I mean, I pay attention to that more when I like don't know the climbs. Okay, but yeah. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, the one thing is, like, in El Dorado a little bit, it, those roads aren't on the map, so I don't think it really know it can't really tell super well with yeah. those, but, but uh, yeah, other than that, it was fine. Do you race with the elevation profile on one of your data screens? I don't need, I just train on the same data screen that I race on. I don't have, like, a special <laughs> one. But you have a map one, right? No, I just... I just look at the little arrows on the bottom. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, <laughs> There's so much more you can map, do with it, your crew, too. If I look at the map, it kills the battery. Oh, true. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I guess on with your 40%, you were limited on one. Uh, yeah, I was, like, like, really worried. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. Okay, cool. Well, let's move into this last section, which is going to be some takeaways slash lessons learned that would be you know kind of the things that we would talk about if we were in a camp scenario so matt give us your three tough tips for riders that um you kind of thought about while you were doing strata rosa um i mean you know obviously nutrition and hydration it's a you know you can't under it's can't say enough about it yeah for an event that is long like you know the guy that went the fastest still took roughly six hours to do it and like if you don't oh. have a practice a solid uh nutrition plan for events like this or even when you're training like you can't stomach you know long, long rides like that and you know we lucked out that it was cool right it's a lot easier to to yeah. uh digest you can't fake it thing and deal with stuff when it's not warm out, but you know, when it gets warm out, it gets that much harder. So yeah, you can uh, fake I mean, it so long. Yeah. 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 So that's, you know, first thing, second thing, again, I'd say probably from all the years of us going out and doing unbound is, you know, having your route out, um, available for you. Cause you never know what's going to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then third, again I think would be like pacing um, just saving some for you know it's really easy to look at the course and say okay like yeah I'm at the halfway point and you know it, it trends down the middle at the halfway point this our course did on, on Saturday but again there's still over 3,000 feet of elevation gain you know to wow. that. so save some for the, the end <laughs> yeah Sweet. Yes, what, what are your tips or what are your takeaways after all of your uh awesomeness from last weekend Tired. yeah and so yeah. pressure maybe <laughs> well yeah I think that I, I don't know I, I think you should just run whatever tire pressure you're comfortable on like I feel like I can run as long as my tires aren't flat. I'm like fine running whatever, but probably just like not blowing yourself up on all the punchy stuff. Like, because I feel like if you do like that big of an effort, like especially this course, because like the climbs are so steep that it it really doesn't make a difference if you just back it down like a tiny bit over six hours. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just riding more steady probably instead of trying to like go really hard put up everything but i mean if you're trying to win i guess it's different but if you're trying to like just feel good the whole time probably just everything christian part two was yeah just back to that pace so, especially for like after six hours it starts to like you 
you can fake it for like four hours, but I think once you get to the six hours, it starts to get really bad. Yeah. I can tell that from experience, so. <laughs> yeah, you looked awesome when you crossed the line in Mammoth. Oh, oh yeah, that was a, that's a good example. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what was ride time at Mammoth for Mammoth Tough? It was probably that? close to six hours. Yeah. Yeah. And I, look it up. I think, yeah, that was probably, I mean, I felt really good for the first four hours of Mammoth. Oh, then, weird. After that, it just went downhill fast. But I was <laughs> eating, like, I was eating really, really good at Mammoth for, like, the first few hours. And then once we got to the washboard section, I was over it. <laughs> yeah, but, what, but, but remember, what's the, okay, so your ride time at Mammoth was 6.43. Yeah. But... You know, the difference at Mammoth is, like, elevation. Yeah. elevation. It was just hard to eat, especially, like, I don't know. I, like, it's hard for me to eat anyway sometimes, so. And that's, that's why we did Strata Rosa. Yeah. We, we could practice that. Yeah. You, you All right. Train your gut, for... gut, gut training. Yeah, no, for the first four hours, I think I ate, like, I had a gel in a bottle an hour. It was just the last few hours that... Uh, that I kind of slacked off. <laughs> well, because they, they they told me my dad was like I had like a fifteen minute lead, so I was uh I was kind of like just cruising in at that point. Wow, nice. And then I so then I hit a train, and then it was yeah I just you, had to sit at a train for a long time. Oh wow! Like you um, hit it, or you just had to no, wait I had for it. Yeah. Wait, I didn't hit it. Yeah, that would be bad. yeah, it's a different story. <laughs> <laughs> just oh, by the way, I hit a train. Justin Dillon got caught by a train too at the very end. I felt bad. It, it was like right at the end too, like a mile before. Just like this is okay. This is where people don't think California and trains. Like it sounds like you're talking about a story from Oklahoma. But yeah, it sounds like they can't. The year I got stuck out there, and I was like, I'll never be out here in the dark. And so I only brought blinky lights because oh. you have to start with lights. And then I rode in with a blinky light for an hour. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. not a California thing. That's what I would have thought. All right, you got two tips. Jonas, give us one more. <laughs> oh, uh, hmm. let me think. So probably, uh, yeah. Any just, weird skills? Maybe just practicing. Yeah, there's a lot of horse skates here. Oh. So you got to really, like, like I was running road cleats, so I didn't uh, I didn't get off for a lot of them. I just bunny hopped them. Okay. But I think running, if I was going to get off on for all of them, I would probably want mountain bike cleats just because it's easier to, like, jump off. And especially if you're racing, you got to, like, really be able to dismount and then get over it fast. Otherwise, you have to, like, do a big power search to get back on the group. Right. Did you, like, make that conscious choice about the road cleats, or do you normally run road? I normally run road. Yeah, I always ride road shoes on my gravel bike now, unless it's, like, somewhere, like, a course that I have to run. Mountain, like, I was going to run mountain bike cleats at Mid-South, but okay. it was, like, not muddy enough to where I would have had to. So then your your decision on that would normally be based on weather or based on, like... Well, based on the amount of running, mostly. Because right. I can't run in the road shoes at all, so... And then you have to... It's, like, so frustrating when they get gunked up and you can't clip in. Just SPDs are... You're not losing that much. I think I just... I'm more comfortable in my road shoes, so... Okay. It's just, like preference i guess that's so interesting that's a, i would have thought you would have just picked the mountain cleats for everything no oh yeah i like my road shoes better i mean i don't run them on like my mountain bike or anything but right i ride them so, for so if you had done stuff. rock cobbler would you have had the mountain cleats on uh probably because i saw that like uh the hill uh, hiking yeah well the hike a bike and then the uh the mud section was bad so for mere I mortals, made, I would have made sure he had not like I went. I went for rock cobbler. I switched from um, my RX eights to my S fires with with spikes. Just yeah. knowing it's rock yeah. cobbler, you're gonna have to hike yeah. a bike. You know. Yeah. Are you what so, are the road shoes or what are the road cleats? Are they Shimano? 
Shimano S Fire RC nine zero three, whatever they're called. What are the cleats you're on? What pedal? Oh, yellow. Just yeah. oh, oh, oh. You're on a Shimano ESL one. Yeah. <laughs> Every Yo, answer but the answer. Said, <laughs> I thought you meant. Yeah. Oh, no, I, I get it. Please. If you like yeah. a. If you like a firm platform, the Shimano pedal on the road is awesome. Like, I love them too, but I've never run them in a gravel event because I know it'll happen. <laughs> no, I've never, I've never, like, had any problems with them other than, uh, yeah, no, I don't think I've, other than yet, the day before, because I, like, face planted in the mud. That was uh, the only time I've ever. <laughs> <clears throat> Thank you, Jonathan. Thank you. <laughs> I mean, it, it helps too that we knew, you know, we knew wasn't gonna have to get off anymore. Yeah, uh, yeah. Right. If I was gonna have to get off, I would have run the run mountain bike shoes for sure. Yeah. I mean, do you think normal people who can't bunny hop, horse skates, or whatever, should run mountain shoes? Do both of you think that for next year? Uh, oh yeah. I yes. Yeah. <laughs> For sure. That's like, say yes. I mean, there, there, was, yeah. there, there was still a couple of water crossing, like. Yeah. You know, it's like, only because you know the roads. There was one saturated. water crossing that we had to, that you had to get off at, and that was like a section that probably I would have rather had. But it was like most of the set. It was fine for most of the time, so. <laughs> I was just more worried, because I figured I'm going to run those at BWR anyway, so I like wanted to get as much time on them as possible. Oh, that's a good point. Look at that. You thinking ahead. Nice job. Yeah. Man. <laughs> cool. Well, We're that was next. On his time. hydration plan for BWR. Yeah. My <laughs> hydration not, not plan was good for the start. I just have to, like, <laughs> continue it. Mm hmm. Is that what is that what's next, Jonas? Or? Uh, so I'm gonna do the U.S. Cup. Oh, in, fun. Like, a few weeks just for fun kind of like mm -hmm. a training day and then bwr uh is, is gonna be the big one and then after that it's kind of like unbound and then gravel nationals those are like the three main things oh, oh. Well, that's a cool schedule is the u.s cup on the Vale lake one that's coming yeah out? not, not okay. the arkansas one right yeah yeah okay cool nice that's fun. Sea otter. Don't forget to see otter. Oh, yeah. Sea otter the week after BWR. Coach. Keeping you in check. What about you, Matt? What's next? Tough camp. Flint Hills Gravel Ride. Yeah. <laughs> Going to go see Bobby and Jeffy. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I, I literally have no, like, races this year that, you know, yet. Yeah, tough stuff. We're yep. fine with that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to cool. peak for Mammoth Tough. That's my A race. Better be. <laughs> 26 miles of climbing at your size. You should be riding everybody off. But... No, yeah. I'm not a yeah. climber. I'm not a climber. Oh, this... Matt, Matt showed me my, my thing. I'm a sprinter. From episode yeah. three to four. Me... Now he's changed his mind. Let me see if it changed, Jonas. Okay, after yeah. This weekend. Hold on. Phenotype phenotype is a sprinter. WKO4 power duration testing like recently and it completely changed his uh, phenotype. So I'm just gonna I might just quit and race crits. <laughs> yeah, you're still a sprinter. <laughs> okay, yeah, maybe that maybe that's just the way to go. Nice. Right, well, like we'll we... see you in Ontario. Have yeah, fun. Well, well we're back to cyclocross. We're fine with that. <laughs> yeah. Alright, yeah. well. Well, son, guys. Yeah, it, you know, I think I want to thank everybody that came out to the, you know, and supported the event. Um, you know, next year is the ten year, and you know, Adrian and Michael Heal, and you know, a lot of the people that did most the work are uh, already like. There's an email going around today already talking about like next year. Next year, yeah, yeah. they're so. more motivated than I am. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, they did an awesome job with it yeah so for yeah we heard this, nothing but good like food aid stations everything that was out there people were stoked so that's awesome yeah and for everyone watching this that's interested it's the redland strata rosa event and it normally sells out very fast and people get on wait lists quickly so 
yeah. little grassroots, super fun event. If you're in SoCal, highly recommend. If it's sold out, just message Jonas. You know, any questions? Don't bother. To do. Those are promoters. <laughs> <laughs> or course mark. Can you like help with course marking and? Yeah, no, I was I was going to, but Matt didn't Matt didn't want help, so. Well, that's the full she. That's not the full story. <laughs> he doesn't want your help, Jonas. He doesn't want your help. Save your legs. He was gonna have to help with course marking in order to to get a wristband to ride, um, because of some uh, miscommunication. But we we found uh, Matt Matt Breyer took pity and gave him his interview. Oh, nice. So, so. it's just Jonas being Jonas, basically. But yeah, and that no, okay. next year. Oh, so registration opens January first, and Adrian said they don't need help marking the courses because there's no markings. Uh huh. Do you need a code to get in? Shammy Butter said the discount code is Horsegate. <laughs> from Jonas. Or Kate <laughs> 24. Use, use that at checkout. <laughs> Yellow cleat <Great>. 5. That's <laughs> for 5% off. Uh, Chris, Sir Chris says I didn't want help from anyone. I needed to bang it out. I needed to just bang out my end of the course marking, and I had a ton going on that day. Yeah, we know. You get into your like, flow state with course marking and everything like that, Matt. We know. Great. Give them a I love I've been marking since I was a teenager. Yeah, if so, anybody you know, needs a course <laughs> match for hire. <laughs> yeah, dollars an hour. <sighs> oh, all, right. all right, thanks guys. I needed that. That was yeah. fun. All right. all right. I don't know what's Jeez. coming up next, Amanda. What are we? Are we doing another talk after Unbound Camp and before we head off to Flint Hills? Yeah, so I'm doing. In Unbound Camp this week, and we'll come on and do a Tough Talk on Tuesday, which will be the Tuesday before we go to Kansas. So we'll do another one and do some how camp went in Emporia and then how camp's going to go in Americas with Bobby. So look out for that one next week. Cool. Perfect. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Now. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Yeah.